name is Elton Hurtis and I am the general manager of the soon to open courtyard by Marriott in Colombo. Hi, I'm Imran. I'm an event producer. I founded the first ever event company in this country uh, called Funtime. Really what we're going to take you through today primarily is to show you exactly what does it really take to open a brand new hotel. Uh, my official designation here is uh, Managing Director, but uh, my unofficial designation is Chief T-Boy. pre-opening activities and how a hotel shapes up and gets ready for the citizens of Sri Lanka and the people of Colombo to visit us very soon. And uh, as you can see, most of my creative thinking, most of my ideas are done under a staircase out here and this is the way I like it. From the what was your big breakthrough in the industry? A big breakthrough in the industry actually it was a it was not so much as a single big big breakthrough it was a transition. I was a, I was in the advertising world uh, from the advertising world, we used to do events. Uh, those events became bigger and bigger. So I really don't, I really can't put a finger on it and say this was my big breakthrough. But uh, in the heydays, it was just a love of music. It was just a love of uh, event or entertainment that brought me to this. Uh, we started something called Rock Saturday, which was at the CHNFC. We started with about 300 people. It became about 1,000 people. Then we did Wild West shows. Then we started doing corporate entertainment for our clients uh, and it just went on. I, I never at that time thought that um, this would become my, my career. It would, become, it would take me all around the world doing events. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy that it happened that way. But to say big breakthrough, I just can't put my finger on one single incident that would say big breakthrough. It was just everything put together uh, that made me come to where I am today. So for, for me, uh, very, very clearly about 20 years ago, uh, you know, after spending five years in the industry, I actually uh, walked into the doors of the JW Marriott Hotel in Mumbai. And uh, I don't know whether it was a big breakthrough because I still consider myself, uh, you know, far from big. I mean, and that is size wise and even, uh, you know, career wise. But uh, to, be, to be fair, uh, that was that was probably the best decision I made in my life and 25 years down the line in the industry uh, I think uh, you know my my career uh, and the industry for that matter has has been uh, you know skyrocketing uh, I used to be a chef uh, and that's where I began my career so some of the few things we we did in those days was you know we kept pushing the bar and uh, I believe that is, that is what uh, actually the industry caught on. Uh, so, so very fortunate that the Marriott decided to uh, you know, open its doors in South Asia. And today we are the largest company in the world. So for me, I, I think I can put a finger on it to an extent. What makes your management skills unique? Management skills? I didn't even know that I possess any of them. Uh, What's unique about us is that uh, I was actually when in conversation with you uh, a while ago, just before we started this, I said if you go up to my uh, social media Facebook page, you'll see my designation written there as Chief T-Boy. Uh, we, always, we always came there with a sense of fun. So we don't really manage. We are a creative pool of people who get together. Uh, we don't have a structure as such, but we are very, very serious about what we do as long as the job gets done. Uh, but we we tend to sit around tables, you know, uh, throw ideas at each other, and go through a creative process. 
So I think if you call it a management skill, then that is unique because uh, it's, a, it's a bunch of very creative people who get together to create something unique, uh, to put out there to entertain the public. Uh, and that's, that's how we manage things. I'm very bad at um, uh, issuing orders, but I'm very good at putting something together that can run smoothly. So, so for me, it's uh, it's rather simple because my my values uh, typically uh, you know began to align with the values of the Marriott Hotel, and you're probably aware that uh, we're 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 almost uh, there as far as launching the first Marriott Hotel in Colombo and the very first courtyard by Marriott Hotel in Sri Lanka. So, uh, you know, I put it down to five things that, that make us so unique. And, you know, when I say us, I mean the Marriott and I mean myself as well. So the first basic uh, value that, that, that we all uh, strive to possess is to put our people first. So before anything, uh, the fact that when you walk across each other in the corridor, if you don't wish anyone, then, you know, there's a problem. Uh, I tell my team that, you know, you've you got to put your family, yourself and then the hotel in that order. So putting people first, we pursue excellence. And I said this also some time ago, you know, that we, we keep pushing the bar. Success is never final. Uh, so basically, as long as, as, long as you, you aim for these skies, you, you kind of land, you know, in a very, very comfortable spot. Uh, embracing change. In today's world, what we've been through in the last three years, I think that is very, very apt and it, you know, works as well. Integrity is the next one. So we believe and we have to, we have no choice when it comes to this, is acting with integrity. That is something that we just cannot compromise on. You know, per, uh, apart from this, serve our world. So whenever we build hotels in the world anywhere, we, we displace a lot of things. So we like to really give back to the community. And that's possibly our five top values. Not possibly, they actually are our five top values. How do you define success? I define success by what we do, uh, what we can achieve. But uh, if, you, if you look at success at an event that we are doing, I have a tendency to stand close to the FOH, the front of house, the operating systems, and watch what's unfolding on stages or what's unfolding at an event. And by the reactions of the audience, by the reactions of the general public, uh, I know I've made it or I haven't made it. Success as general in the field of what we are doing is to be appreciated, to be known to my clients, to have my clients come to me over and over again and say, listen, we'd like you to do something. I define success there. I don't define success by money or the amount of money that you earn. Uh, in our business, I always say, um, passion first, money follows. So at the end of the day, I would say to be successful, to be recognized, to be even sitting here and you asking me how I define success is also a measure of my success. So yeah, that's that's what I would define success by. I actually uh, say that success is never final, and uh, I've said this before. You know, we keep pushing the bar. So personally, uh, Elton Hurt is never going to arrive in life. Okay, so that is that is on a very very personal level. But but on a professional level, if as a hotel, as the courtyard by Marriott Colombo, our customers are able to achieve their purposes. For me, that's success. If my associates or the folks that work with me are able to achieve their dreams, for me, that is success, right? So even if there is there's an end goal, I'd urge everyone that interacts with me to keep pushing that bar. So the moment you get closer and closer to that goal, you push the bar a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. And that's how I come up and I say success is never final. So it's as simple as that. From the Cube. Most about being in your industry. I just enjoy my being in this industry. I I actually were, had never any intention of getting into it. It was almost accidental. Uh, we were the first ever event production company in this country and uh, I'm not going to tell you how long ago because that will show you how old I am but <sighs> at the same time 
what I enjoy most is the creative process. I'm surrounded by uh, creative people. My, my, the people I work with are very creative in what they do. Uh, I, love the, I love the ideas that clients bring. I love the changes. Uh, every day is not the same day. Every event is not the same. Uh, and uh, there's nothing called boredom. I'm not sitting behind a desk and pushing a pen or I'm not doing everything mundane, which I do every day over and over again. For me, it's, that is the difference. I, I have uh, such a vast, uh, the, the whole scenario keeps changing over and over again. And that's what I love about it. So for me, uh, every single day is a new day, you know, and uh, being, being a business professional to, to say that I do not know what to expect wouldn't be apt. So as a businessman, as a property leader, you know, we, we obviously forecast, we obviously project, you know, and, and, and we kind of understand where the day is going to progress. But the best part about, about the hotel industry and the service industry is that, you know, it's, it's so human intensive that you really cannot predict, you know, someone might fall sick, someone might, might, might just propose to someone in your uh, lobby lounge and your day changes from there, you know. For all you know that, uh, you know, uh, the wedding, the wedding that was, that was planned and maybe Imran Saibu is planning this wedding actually has another wedding coming up the very next day. So it's a, it's a new day every day for me and I tell, I tell people and I tell myself every morning, as soon as you wake up in the morning, if you don't feel like going to work, then there's a problem, you know. But guess what, I haven't had that issue till now in my industry. How do you take care of yourself so you don't burn out? That's a good question. Uh, I don't take care of myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm always told by my family, uh, by my wife actually, I was talking to her yesterday and she told me, uh, what's the use of doing all this if you're going to fall sick? Uh, because I was, I, was on the, I was on the wheel, I was, I was running around. But the thing is, um, what really fires me, what keeps me going, is this passion for doing things. Uh, for creating events, for doing shows. I can, I can go without sleep for 48 hours if something interests me, uh, interests me really well. The, the, the thing is, I try to take care of myself. I try to go do a bit of exercise, never happens. Uh, it happens in bursts and spurts. Uh, I try to eat the right food, never happens. My meals are all very erratic. Uh, yesterday I had two godambas cut up with some hodi on it and that was it. Uh, but that's <laughs> that's how it works. Uh, but it really never it really never affects me because what what feeds me and what drives me is uh, is doing the shows, is creating them, is um, is putting things together. And I hope I don't burn out. I do have days when I have a mind block, and when those days do come, and I I am struggling to uh, imagine something for a client who wants something different, different, unique. I decide, okay, not today. I get into bed, uh, I watch my retro movies, I read a book, and I just shut off from the world for about a couple of hours. And I, when I come back, I'm fresh again. I hope I don't burn out. So it boils down to two things really again, things that are controllables and things that are not controllables. Taking care of yourself is clearly a controllable aspect of your life, right? So, and, and while I'm at this, might as well, you know, touch or tap on the things that are not controllable, you know? Getting, getting a, terminal ailment or a disease is clearly not in my control you know that is that is the almighty who's probably you know kind of written it for me or it's in my destiny but you know waking up in the morning getting a bit of discipline not bit a lot of discipline in your life waking up in the morning hitting the gym or going for a run you know will will charge that uh, endorphins to an extent where it will make you happy right once you get to work you should have a plan you should have a plan laid out as to how your day is going to progress, no matter how difficult your day is going to be, how disorganized your day is going to be, you know, and that discipline will come into play where you have to start to say no in some time, I mean, in some cases where you cannot have people just barge in and, and break your schedule. So sometimes you need to prioritize. But what what does Elton do? Elton makes sure his people leaves on time every single day. I, 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 I ensure people come on time. I push for them to come on time and I push for them to leave on time. A work-life balance is so essential for everyone, including myself. And as the leader of, of the organization, if I myself am not disciplined, then it, this, is, this is not going to flow, right? It, I, I mean, and, and, and rightly said, it does flow from the top. So I try my best to eat my meals on time. I try my best 
to sleep on time. I try my best to wake up at the same time every single day. And uh, you know, I, I try not to confuse my body. If I can, I would even put in the same food every single day for the rest of my life. And that would cause even lesser confusion. What has been the most important part of your journey so far? The most important part of my journey so far? The most important part of my journey so far, I would say, has been the fact that I said it earlier actually, but I've met so many, so many people, so many creative people, and I would never have been able to do what I'm doing today uh, if I hadn't got into this, this, this profession of mine. I, I really don't call it a profession, it's, it's my hobby. Um, and uh, yep, uh, that, that's what makes the difference for me. So I would say, yeah, the, the, the most important part of my journey is the people I've met to condense it. Uh, the times that I've had, uh, the exposure that I've had, I would have never been able to travel the world uh, to meet so many interesting people. Uh, I was, last year I was doing Expo in Dubai and uh, that was so amazing. Uh, so those experiences would never have been mine uh, if I had not been in this business. I like to divide this into two, uh, on a personal level and on a professional level. On a personal level, I think what, what, what changed my life was, was uh, me meeting my wife. I met her when, when she was a little girl in college, uh, in university. And uh, from then on, I guess I found my purpose in life. Uh, we, found, we found out that, that we both wanted to have children and we actually decided to go on this journey together and it's been about 27 years that I've known this, 28 years I'm sorry, I've known this wonderful lady. Uh, so that's, that's the personal level. On, on a professional level, I feel that I'm, I'm blessed to be able to deliver on a promise and the promise is very very simple. The Marriott Hotel was founded on May 20th 1927. So, John Willard Marriott and his wife, Alice Marriott, were just married and they drove from Utah in a small Ford Model T and they opened a nine-seater root beer stand in 1920 on May 27th. And from then on, we've always believed is that to, we, we need to put our people first because if, if we put our people first, they will take care of the customer and the customer will keep coming back. Uh, so. I get to live that promise every single day. So I believe I'm extremely fortunate and uh, let's hope that uh, I can continue doing this, you know, uh, making, making people smile every single day. If you had one piece of advice to someone just starting out, what would it be? I have just uh, one word, not even one piece of advice to somebody just starting out in our business and I've said it over and over again. The word is passion. If you don't have the passion, don't get into this business. If you're looking for the money, like I said, get into something else. First passion, then money. That's about it. I would go back to my statement of purpose. Find your purpose in life. If you, if you have, you know, found a purpose in life, and that purpose could be a purpose that can be filled, full, you know, fulfilled in, in five years, 10 years, 15 years, you will work towards that. Choose an industry that makes you happy. Choose an industry that makes you want to wake up and go to work every single day. And yes, the hospitality industry is that industry. If you're, if you're, if you're looking to be, to be rich, then focus again on your career. Don't focus on jumping jobs. Get to a certain position and you will realize that everything will fall into place. But find that purpose. Do you see in each other as business personalities? <laughs> well, as you said before, there is the disciplined one and there is me as erratic as ever. What do you say, Elton? Imran, I, I, I actually see a few differences. I was just saying a couple of uh, minutes ago, you know, we like chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese. But what I, what I really see, uh, I see, I see more common. Uh, things between me and Imran and what I, what I really love about Imran is, is his commitment levels and his commitment levels to friendship, to his professional aspect of his life and to his family as well. So and, and those, are, those are certain values that even I possess Imran. So 
So there are no differences per se. Yes, we're no. chalk and cheese on certain things. But we are meeting. We are meeting on common ground on exactly. those areas. Exactly. That's that's where we yeah. become very fine, yeah. fine uh, gourmet cheese. But when I met up, when I met up with Il, uh, with Elton, I was about to say Hilton. <laughs> when I met up with Elton, I actually I was wondering. You know, I'm walking into a general manager of a hotel story. How how is it going to be? And I suddenly find this man in jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> Who's you know ready to get down with us and actually create, and that's what I loved about it. I think that's where our, I would say our business relationship, or as is now evolved into a friendship, began. Yes. Yes. Yeah, my relationship with Imran was pretty much the same. Where you know when I first met him, he said, "See, Elton, Elton, I don't do uh, New Year's. You know, I just I just want to relax." And I said, "You know what? Please, please do me a favor and do it for me, and I, I promise you, uh, you know, you will get a chance to relax." And We've not uh, looked back ever no. since. We did yeah. it almost every year. Every year, and we continue to do it, Imran. Yeah, it yeah. became the it became the family holiday. It's tradition. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give each other? To each other, ah, that's a good one. You go first. I would tell Imran that he needs to slow down a bit. <laughs> I tell Imran to take care of himself. I would love it if I can pick him up every morning, take him for a run. You know, and get him some more muscle, uh, <laughs> so that so that when he ages, uh, he he can still lift things. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he's going to tell me to loosen up. But <laughs> <laughs> that's you. Well, the advice that I can give Elton is um, he thinks he thinks huge, he thinks big, and I keep saying Elton, go back to your. Little account book and check to see whether all these huge ideas are going to actually be practical reality. But that's also what I like about him, because he uh, he's not the normal uh, you know person who's just looking at numbers. He's looking at creativity and yeah, I would say just go on like that. Uh, we'll try and find the medium. I know you will, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get that with you around. <laughs> your personality plays a major role in your success. True or false? Elaborate. Well, as for me, I did call in uh, one of these um, social media, uh, you know, people who look after your social media, the social media experts, and I told them do something about my company. It's uh, called Fun Time. I started it so many years ago, and at that time it seemed good. But like I mentioned to you, I think before now it sounds like the name of a very uh, upmarket massage parlor or um, oh, you know yeah. or something like that <laughs> like a fun time <laughs> but then he turned around and he told me he said imran i can't do anything with your with your company or to bring you back because you have established yourself as a brand so unknowingly yes. i have become the brand which means i can never sell my company to you without selling myself <laughs> so that, that's where well, he's Imran Saibu is a brand. There's, a, yes, there's absolutely become, no doubt about it. But yes, and and for me, Imran, I mean, it's it's I I I've always believed that you know if 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 the if the leader of of the hotel is is boring and he's not he's not jumpy and I mean, he doesn't have to be hyper and bouncing off the walls, but you need to have a sense of humor. And yeah. and, and when I say that, make no mistake, it, it's not it's not sarcasm. I'm actually saying sense of humor. You, when you when you lead, you need to lead from the front. You yourself should be committed on deadlines, right? If if, if as a general manager of a hotel, a married hotel, I'm not able to, uh, you know, deliver on my own deadlines to my team, and I think I'm sending a wrong message. So yes, the personality makes a big difference. But I'll tell you one thing. Uh, that that uh, little uh, thing that you were doing in the interview part of it in the cubicle. Yes. Uh, when you mentioned the story about uh, how the Marriott actually started. You know that is that is pretty moving. Yeah. That took two people. It's an emotional create, story to create. It's an emotional story to create yeah. this empire. That's just that's nine amazing. seats, Imran. Nine seats, an A W root beer stand, and look where we are today—the largest hotel chain in the world, that's more it. than eight thousand in more than one hundred and thirty-three countries. It's unbelievable it. where yeah. they've gone. And 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 Mr. Marriott uh, was was telling us the other day, we're we're just ninety-five years old. We're not even a hundred years old as yet. Actually, in this conversation, I've lost sight of the question now. But uh, <laughs> it's more of personalities. <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the day, I think yeah, it's it's creating that legend. Exactly. Uh, once you yeah. created it, that's it. True. Yeah, and that that gives you a sense of yeah, I I really did something right for a change. <laughs> you have, I know that. <laughs> what do you think about this program? You should make sure this happens every day, <laughs> not every week or every month or every quarter. You should do this every day. Push the bar, please. This is one of the 
best things that you guys have, have come up with. The format is so simple, you know, you call it the cubicle. It, I mean, sitting here, I don't, I don't feel like I'm under pressure for mm -hmm. the first time. And, and, and in your, in your, you're actually talking to a camera shy person, right? So do this every day. It brings it, it's interesting. Uh, it brings personalities together. And like you said, Elton and I, I are like chalk and cheese. But you bring two people together and the chemistry, if the chemistry works, yeah. Yep, we like the cubicle. Keep going. <laughs>